Good day. My name is Loida Jean S. Sabunan, and in this video, I will be discussing some topics in Chapter 5 entitled The Spies and the Secret Emissary and Visited by Loved Ones. First, let's start with The Spies and the Secret Emissary. Rizal had always knew that his enemies would send him spies to gather some proofs of him being an inseparatist and an insurgent, and Rizal was able to expose two of them. As we all know, Rizal have had a lot of enemies not just because of his riches and intelligence, but also because of his wanted agendas that is against some high-ranking people of his time, especially with his coherent way of conveying and his will to release the Filipinos from the colonizers, surely a lot of enemies would like to take him down, to prevent him from doing his plans. However, as a wise man as he is, Rizal isn't someone who will be easily deceived. One of them is a guy named Matias Arieta, who was a physician. However, he revealed his mission to Rizal due to conscience after Rizal treated him. He then asked for forgiveness. Another spy met Rizal on March of 1895. He introduced himself to Rizal as Pablo Mercado and he claimed to be Rizal's relative. Pablo volunteered to bring Rizal's letter to certain people in Manila. However, Rizal was so suspicious so he interrogated the guy. It turned out that he was a paid secret agent by the Recollect Friars and his true name is Florencio Nanaman of Cagayan de Misamis. Despite knowing his real name, Rizal didn't kick him out of his house. Instead, he let him stay for one night as it was raining that evening. Even the spies of Rizal who wanted to leech something from him and are against him had turned their backs to those who commanded them. How good it is for Rizal to still treat his spy and even let the other spies sleep under his roof despite knowing their agendas. This just shows that Rizal surely fight for goodwill and not of his own desires. However, it also shows how Rizal had handled the intruders and on how cautious he is especially when he knew his enemies are just around. June the next year, which is on 1896, the leader of Katipunan, Andres Bonifacio, sent a secret emissary to Rizal. The emissary's name is Dr. Pio Valenzuela, and he disguised himself as a blind patient's mere companion and successfully delivered the message to Rizal. On the message, Andres Bonifacio wants to be sanctioned first by Rizal before doing the revolution. However, Rizal refused to approve the revolution as he preferred a peaceful war than a violent way of obtaining freedom. But Rizal advised that Bonifacio should ask some support from some powerful and wealthy Filipinos as he believed that the revolution would be unsuccessful without some weapons and monetary support. Rizal also recommended to Bonifacio to ask some support from rich and educated Filipinos like Antonio Luna, who is expert on military strategy. On Rizal's view about the Katipunan's revolution, it is clear that he really chooses a peaceful war and it is evident on his ways to free us from the colonizers. That despite not using a deadly weapon, Rizal is still able to fight for us in his own ways, making him the appropriate national hero. However, despite the different views of obtaining freedom, it is still so kind for Rizal to give his objective advice to not make the revolution a failure. Also, it shows how respectful Rizal is, especially that Bonifacio still asked for his sanction. Now let's proceed to the next topic entitled Visited by a Loved One. Rizal was in the pitan when his true love, Leonor Rivera, died. And what consoled his heart was the visits of his mother and his sister. On August 1893, Doña Teodora, Rizal's mom, with his sister Trinidad, resided with Rizal in his Casa Cuadrada or Square House. Rizal successfully operated his mother's cataract. Maria and Narcisa, who were also Rizal's sister, visited him at times with their children. Maria's son is named Mauricio or Osho, and Lucia's sons were Teodosio or Osho and Istanislao or Tan. The three of them had their early education through Rizal. Jose Rizal's stay in the Pitan depicts despite how respectable and important man he is, he still lives a simple life with his family. Despite his mourning for his true love, he instead showed his love for his other loved ones as he haven't been able to fully let his true love experience it. His bond he had with his mother and his sisters on their simple but comfortable house shows a different side other than him being our national hero. Also, and how he gave importance to education which he dearly shared on his nephews. 
In 1895, Doña Teodora left the pitan to be with Don Francisco in Manila who was getting weaker. Shortly after Doña Teodora left, Rizal met Josephine Bracken. Josephine Bracken is an orphan with Irish blood. She is the stepdaughter of Jose's patient in Hong Kong. Josephine became Rizal's commonly wife, but they didn't get married in the church because of Rizal's anti-Catholic views. Before the year ended in 1895, the couple had a prematurely born child and died after a few hours it was born. The son was named after Rizal's dad named Francisco. It's just sad how our national hero are not able to spread his bloodline and have someone to continue his legacy. However, despite not having a living child and have someone carry the name, Rizal had still been able to live his name through his deeds that have greatly affected us. He may not have a child who will spread his thought ways, but the hope he had for the youth and his example will remain a trace. That's it on my report on Chapter 5 Topics The Spies and the Secret Emissary and Visited by Loved Ones. I am once again Eloida Jean Habunan. Thank you and have a great day.